Hello students welcome to this course this uh, course is an introduction to linear algebra and uh, whenever you will learn the linear algebra it is basically the study of linear transformation and their algebraic properties okay so it is basically the study of linear transformation so we know from the basic mathematics that a transformation which is also known as a function or mapping is nothing but basically is an operation that uh, transforms an input a set of inputs so we have here a uh, input of four elements and and with this transformation or with this operation we obtain this set of output right now there are lots of different transformations we have seen from the courses of abstract algebra that we know one to one transformation on to transformation but uh, since this is not the part of this lecture series so i'll not discuss about that but you can think transformation like uh, it is some kind of machine say for example consider it as a baking machine you give some ingredients like flour egg sweet sugar and finally you obtain some bakery product right like bread biscuits cake so transformation is similarly a kind of machine you give some input and in return you get some output right but also you have to note that not all transformation in the real life example are linear so whenever we will study linear transformation it has some special features okay so studying that special features is what we called it as a linear algebra okay so a simple example of linear transformation let's say y equals 4x clearly it is a mapping right you give some input say you give x equal 1 and you obtain y equals 4 you give an input x equal 1.5 and you obtain y equals 6 so it is a mapping so it is an operation there is no doubt about it but it is also a linear transformation but how could i say like this that it is a linear transformation well basically whenever we are talking about linear transformation in the field of linear algebra there are some definition has been assigned into it okay if any function following that definition or following that properties then we can called it as a linear transformation okay on the contrary this is not a linear transformation okay observe that in both the cases the highest power of x is 1 right here also we have our x equal 1 i mean the power of x is 1 the degree is 1 and here also the degree is 1 both represents the equations of line right but this one is non linear transformation but this one is a linear transformation well how could i say something like this this is because i am writing down the definition here so we will say basically in linear algebra the linear transformation is denoted by t okay so it is tx so let's say t is a mapping from a to b what is a and what is b i will come to that part later but right now just focus on the definition or the properties of linear transformation okay so we will say this transformation is linear if this following two properties hold okay t of x plus y as tx plus ty and t of cx as c of tx okay where x and y is basically a vector okay these things are vector x y are taken from a a is called vector space i will come to that part later for for the time being just note it down in your copy that x and y is vector and a is called vector space b is also a vector space and c is a scalar okay it can be a real number it can be a complex number whatever depending on the data has what has given to the problem but most cases it is real or complex only so if the transformation any transformation follow these two properties or follow these two definition then we can coin it as a linear transformation okay so now let us check that why i am saying or you can also check it now that why it is a linear transformation see you can write this as i am using some different color say green color 
So let's say tx equals 4x. Now see, I will do this one. You should try this one, okay? tx plus y is 4 of x plus y. Yes, I just replace x by x plus y. This is 4x plus 4y. And this we know tx and this is ty, correct? So observe that this condition hold, yes? And uh, what about this one? Let's say T of Cx. C is any scalar, real complex, whatever. So this is nothing but I will again replace x by Cx. So it is Cx. This is C times 4x. This is C times Tx. So property 2 also hold, correct? So we can say this as a linear transformation, right? So for that reason, I was saying this as a linear transformation. But I deny this as a linear transformation. Can you check it why? Just check it by yourself. I am doing it meanwhile here. T of x, say x plus 2, okay? Now, T of x plus y is x plus y plus 2. Yes, observe that. We cannot write this as tx plus ty. Yes, isn't it so? This is not equal to this one. Because tx plus ty, what is this? This is x plus 2 and this is again y plus 2. So we have here x plus y plus 4, right? But we have x plus y plus 2. So in this case, we cannot write this as tx, I mean in this form. In this case, this form is, is not obtainable, right? Therefore, for that reason, it is not a linear transformation, even though the equation represents a line, okay? So, you have to be careful about this thing, but don't worry, we will do problems on this very soon. So, this is just for an introduction for you that what is linear transformation to make you the feeling that what is linear transformation, okay? So, now that we have learned that uh, what is linear transformation, we got some idea, right? So, as we know that uh, linear transformation and matrices are the focus of this course. So, before diving into more details, we must first study another important concept which is the basic concept of linear algebra is vectors and vector spaces, okay? So, what is vector and what is vector spaces? Well, before going to this part that what is vector, let us first learn that what is scalar? Only then it will be easier for you to understand what is vector, yes? Well, informally a scalar is any quantity which can be described by a single number, say 1, 2, 3.5, root 2, i, mm, 3 plus i, something like this, which can be described in a single number. For example, let's say an object has a mass 30, okay? So 30 is a number, right? It's a single number, so it is a scalar quantity. Similarly, density, speed, you know from physics, right? What is scalar, what is vector? We know from the physics that uh, if we have direction in the definition, then it is called vector. For example, velocity is a vector, yes, but the magnitude of the velocity, which is called speed, it is a scalar, right? Similarly, the concept is same in linear algebra also. But instead of saying direction, we will represent in other way, in other fashion. But the concept will remain same uh, through our mathematics and physics that if we can write in as a single number, we call this as a scalar. And if direction is involved, which I will come after some time, it is called as vector. Now we will learn a little bit about scalar also in the fashion of mathematics. So, we will say that, uh, so first of all, I would introduce with you the set of scalars, which is the set of all real numbers. This is also called as field of scalars, okay? Field of, we can say, real scalar. Why we are saying real? Because it is a set of real numbers, right? So, it is represents in this way the field of real numbers and it is called as field, right? We know this is field, yes? So, what are some properties of scalar? Any two scalars can be added 
say x and y belongs to r we can add those scalars we will get some number you can add 1 and 2 you can add 1 and root 2 yes you can add 1 and 3.5 yes and we will get some number so this is one of the property what the other important property you can subtract you can multiply or together you can perform this operation right x dot y plus z equals x y plus x z yes this we called multiplication is distributes over addition okay similarly we have associative property x plus y plus z this we can write in this way x plus y plus z so these are some properties of scalar which basically follow because of the field because of the definitions of field so scalars obey various rules of algebra next if we turn now to vectors and vector spaces so basically a vector is a any member of a vector space or a vector space is any class of objects which can be added together or multiplied with scalars. A more popular but uh, less mathematical accurate definition of a vector is something like this that any quantity as we have learned from the physics which is with both direction and magnitude okay any quantity that have a direction and magnitude is a vector isn't it so and we usually write vector whenever we are writing vector we give an arrow on his head right as with scalars vector also obey certain rules of algebra and before we give the formal definition let us recall some familiar examples let's say we are working on r2 space okay which is something like this I hope you are already familiar with this from the coordinate geometry that x and y belongs to r say in the coordinate plane any point you take 1 2 or here you take 3 4 something like this this is r2 plane right yes this is r2 plane isn't it sir and this one is origin now observe that this point if we name this as a and if we name this as b this point has some direction right respect to origin o a o b we are moving in some particular direction whenever we are mentioning this point 1 comma 2 or whenever you are mentioning 3 comma 4 similarly like other quadrant whenever we take any point we are moving in that particular direction right therefore we will call the point or the number inside this space as a vector because it has some direction but we know vector has both magnitude and direction isn't it so therefore what is the magnitude of this point 1 comma 2 what is the magnitude of this point 3 comma 4 well it is also pretty simple we know from the coordinate geometry that the distance of a from the origin is the magnitude of this point the distance from b from the origin is the magnitude of this point therefore the magnitude of this vector is square root of 1 square plus 2 square because it is the distance basically similarly the magnitude let me write here magnitude okay it is magnitude of this point is we know it is this one because it is the distance from the origin so 1 comma 2 is a vector why because we have its magnitude and we also have its direction because we are moving in this direction only then we can reach at this point if we want to reach 3 comma 4 should we proceed in this direction no we have to proceed in this direction yes only then we can reach at this point so this point has a direction this point has a magnitude so we can call this as a vector this point has a direction this point has a magnitude so we can call this as a vector similarly there are infinite numbers of points here and all of these point they have their separate direction they have their separate magnitude okay so elements or number of this space of this set is called as vector and we call this as a vector space okay now observe that as I mentioned vector also follow the 
addition like scalars you have heard about vector addition right how we can add these two vector so basically what we are going to do is we are going to perform point wise addition right 1 plus 3 x to x y to y okay so you obtain 4 comma 6 so this is vector addition only now i am going to show you another interesting thing here that as what we have learned from the physics the vector addition law yes that if x is a vector and y is a vector then we have this from the vector addition law that is parallelogram law of vector addition that we can write x vector plus y vector as z vector so let's say this is our a vector and this is our b vector okay therefore our z vector will be 4 comma 6 okay so this is our vector addition yes Similarly, you can also multiply a vector by a scalar. There is also vector multiplication, vector product, cross product, dot product, that we will come to later. But right now, we will be confined only on scalar multiplication of vector. Okay, so let's say we want to multiply a vector, say 1 comma 2 with a scalar, say root 3. So the output will look something like this. It is root 3 to root 3. That is root 3 times 1 comma 2 times root 3. Okay. This is how we perform vector addition in the space of R2 only. Okay. But if you want to go R3, the procedure would be same. You just have to multiply pointwise or you just have to add pointwise only. Okay. And similarly, we also have null vector, this origin. I mean, in R2, we express null vector as in this way 0 comma 0 this is our null vector in r2 okay so vectors in this r2 space are used for many physical quantities in two dimensions yes they can be represented graphically by arrows in a plane say you can represent oa in this way right you can represent OB in this way, right? Similarly, if we now consider R3 vector space, so how the set looks like? It looks like this. We have three point here now where X, Y, Z all belongs to R, yes? Similarly, we can also perform vector addition here. Let's say 1, 2, 3 plus say 0.5, 2.7, and uh, say root 3 okay similarly point wise addition we have 1 plus 0 0.5 2 plus 2.7 3 plus root 3 i am doing the addition but similarly you can also do the subtraction okay the same thing you just have to do point wise subtraction or let me do one thing plus minus so it is something like this okay 1 plus minus, if it is plus, then it would be 1 plus 0 0.5. If it is minus, then it will be 1 minus 0 0.5. In this way, it will proceed in this point wise. Similarly, this is the vector addition. Similarly, we can also have scalar multiplication. Let's say you want to multiply with 4. So, 1, 2, 3. Multiplying with scalar 4, we obtain 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3. This is 4, 8, 12 okay so this is how we perform the vector addition scalar multiplication in r2 space r3 space r4 r5 or you can move in higher dimension of r r10 r100 or rn for any values of n okay basically all the theorems or formula that we are going to learn here will be true for any rn okay for any r where n is any natural number but one thing you have to remember here that you should not be confused with r2 and r3 in the sense you cannot add an element of r3 with the element of r2 you cannot do this okay because it is undefined it does not make sense yes because you don't have any entity for 3. Similarly, we also have null vector in R3. Like R2, we have 0, 0. 
and in R3 we have 0, 0, 0. So vectors in R3 also used for many physical quantities such as velocity, current, magnetic fields, displacement, whenever we are displacement in three dimension. As I mentioned, you can proceed further. You can go R4, you can go R5, yes, in this way, which may be required whenever we are moving in some higher dimension. For example, if you are doing our populations in biology, portfolios in finance, or many other types of quantities which need several numbers to describe to represent the equation completely, okay? Like in linear programming, sometimes you need 10 variables, say x1, x2, up to x10. So in that case, you have to work on R10, okay? So now we are in the position of uh, defining what is a vector space. We have some idea that how the vector space looks like. Now we can with, I mean, uh, based on this, uh, whatever we have seen right now, based on this, we will formulate a definition of vector space and we will generalize this, okay, in the sense that any space following those definition, we call that as a vector space, okay. 